Hey everybody and welcome to another Think Geo tutorial video. Uh, this one follows on from our simple uh, quick start with Think Geo UI web for Blazor and how we added a simple Think Geo cloud base map. Today we're going to go a bit further and we're going to add a shapefile based feature layer on top of that base map. Uh, the shapefile we're working with in today's example is all of the world's capital cities. It's a simple point based shapefile. You can get it from our ThinkGeo GitHub page at github.com slash thinkgeo. If you just head over to our quick start sample for Blazor and either clone or download this, that's going to come with some data here in the data folder, the capitals and countries. Today we're going to be using the worldcapitals.shp. So let's come back over to our project. This is where we had our base map. You can see I've already added the capitals shapefile to the project. And now we need to add that to our map. And the way we're going to do that is by creating what's called a shapefile feature layer. Now to do that, we're actually going to need to add some C-sharp code to this Razor page. Uh, what's cool about Razor is that you can just add inline code by identifying it as a code block like so. So this is where we're going to write our C-sharp to actually get our World Capitals shapefile set up and styled and added to the map. First thing we're going to do is create a geo collection of layer, call it layers, it's a new geo collection. Now we are going to override the uninitialized method. And this is just, this gets executed when the map is first initialized. And when that happens, we want to create our capitals layer, call it capital layer. And this is a new shapefile feature layer. And uh, what we pass into the constructor here is the path to that shapefile. Um, shapefiles come with a group of files, one of which is like a, a dbase file that has the feature metadata. Um, what we really want here is the .shp file. So we're going to call it, or rather we're going to load world capitals.shp. And now that we have that, there's one more important thing that we need to do. Our World Capitals layer, our shapefile rather, is actually uh, using the decimal degrees coordinate system, which is identified by the uh, projection ID 4326. However, our map um, is using the Web Mercator projection, which you may be familiar with if you've looked at Google Maps, Bing Maps, OpenStreetMap, and so on. So we need to convert from decimal degrees to Web Mercator. And we can do that with a single line, capital layer dot feature source dot projection converter. And that will be a new projection converter from 4326 to 3857. That is decimal degrees. Uh, and Web Mercator, respectively. Okay, so we have our shapefile feature layer, but nothing's going to show up on the map if we add it to the map now because it isn't styled, and without a style, the layer is invisible. So let's create a point style because this is a point based layer. We're going to create a new point style, and we'll use an object initializer here to set some properties. First of all, we can create a symbol type. And this is just to use one of our built-in symbols. We have numerous ones. We're going to go with a traditional circle. Then we're going to say how the circle should be styled. So we do that by creating a fill brush, which basically controls what the fill color uh, of the circle will be. We will create a geo solid brush using geocolors.white is one of our predefined named colors. So it'll be a white circle. Then we're going to create an outline pen, which is uh, going to give us the ability to draw a border around the circle. And that's going to take a geo pen object and we're going to make that one black and set it to a two pixel width. And then we're going to say that the symbol size should be, let's go with eight actually. And that creates our style. But now we need to actually apply the capital style to the capital layer. So we're going to go capital layer dot zoom level set dot zoom level 01. That's the very first zoom level as far zoomed out as you can be. We're going to set its default point style to be our capital style like so. So what this does is it makes those cities appear as circles 
only at zoom level one, which you're probably not going to be looking at too much. So what we now need to do, if we want to see the same style, no matter what zoom level we're looking at, we want to basically copy that style onto all the other zoom levels. And we can do that simply with another single line, zoom level set dot zoom level one, apply until zoom level and set that equal to apply until zoom level dot level 20, which is as far in as you can zoom. That means the cities will look the same at all scales. Finally, we're going to go layers, add capital layer. That adds it to our geo collection of layers that we defined up here. So that's all well and good, but really all we're doing here is putting a layer into a geo collection. How do we get that onto the map? Well, we can add the layer to the map really easily by just coming up here to the blazer component in our overlays setting group. We're going to underneath the Think Geo Cloud raster maps overlay that we added before. We're going to add a new layer overlay. We're going to give it the ID of capital cities so we can refer to it by name later if we need to. Uh, we'll set the tile width and height to 512 pixels. That's the size of the actual raster tile that will be rendered to the client side. And finally, we're going to bind layers to our layers geo collection that we set up in our C sharp code right here. And that's all you need. So now let's hit F5 and we'll rebuild and debug this application. And now what we should see is our uh, Think Geo Cloud base map with a shape file of the world's capital cities laid on top of it. That'll launch Safari for you. And here it is. So now we can see that we have exactly that. We have our base map with our capital cities drawn on top. And of course, you could draw just about whatever shape file you wanted on here. You could add roads. You could add uh, specific infrastructure data that you might have, uh, proprietary data of any kind, uh, wind power locations, for example. The possibilities are pretty limitless, and our base maps from ThinkGeo Cloud give you a really nice backdrop behind uh, whatever custom user data you might want to show. And that's as easy as that is. So thanks again for watching, and uh, we hope you've enjoyed this ThinkGeo tutorial video. Stay with us as we release more how-tos and tutorials for using ThinkGeo UI version 12. And once again, thanks for watching.